Hi everyone, welcome to another Astronomy with Claire. Um, it's so, another video almost straight after the last one. It's another clear night, which is excellent news. Uh, the telescope is outside, it's all polar aligned, uh, everything's set up, ready to go, which is brilliant. As you can see on screen, we have the uh, Veil Nebula or the, the Witch's Broom, um, which you may have seen at the end of the last video. Um, have a look at that if you if you if you want. Um, so basically, yes, this is a um, supernova remnant. It is, if you can imagine, if you can imagine, I don't know, a big splash on the floor and everything sort of splashing outwards, what have you. This is the edge of of that sort of splash. So a star has gone exploded. It's not the star that's in the middle of the screen. That is a star between us on the Earth and and the supernova remnant, which is this this filament sort of this um this gaseous area here. But all of this here is basically from a star roughly around about here that exploded and all of this material is superheated to millions of degrees centigrade and, and Fahrenheit and that is expanding outwards. So I managed to get an hour last night which came out surprisingly well so I'm going to get um, probably another another hour I don't know something like that um, and then I'm going to um, take a look at let's see so this is what we're looking at the minute is the uh, the 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 which is broom the the uh, veil nebula and as you can see this is the supernova remnant um, so there's there's an um, east veil nebula so this part is literally going to the left if you can imagine it that way and this bit is heading to the right so this is where the sort of splash was in the middle um, and a star I think they determine it as around about here um, thousands of years ago went supernova apparently was bright enough to see during the day um, on Earth and um, basically all of these, you know, the, the outer edge has been blown away from the inner core and this is what we are seeing here gradually expanding. And this is the way that all red giant stars will go um, that are many, many times the size of our sun. So our sun will, will not explode like that. It will turn into a planetary nebula in about four billion years time. And a planetary nebula is something that I may go and look at next after getting a bit more data, a bit more images on um, that, that um, the uh, Vow Nebula. Um, and that is the Dumbbell Nebula. So the Dumbbell Nebula is this one simply because it looks like a dumbbell um, shape and it is a planetary nebula so it is the way that most stars that are, are below a certain size will go um, and at the end of their days when they've used up all of their nuclear fuel so um, that a star shines gives off heat um, and and lights uh, simply through the the um, the act of nuclear fusion uh, billions of tons of of um, of hydrogen material is burnt every second. If you can think of it as burnt, basically every second by the sun. Um, and after another four and a half billion years, um, because our sun is about middle aged, it'll basically turn into one of these, which is where the uh, it'll expand to a red giant, and then the um, nuclear fuel will run out and the outer edge will collapse and expand outwards like this as a, a big ball of, of gas with the middle star in the middle, the middle star and the, 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 the remaining core of the, um, of the, of that initial sun being a, a white dwarf. Uh, which is that that's it there so um, I'm hoping to yeah to take some images of that which should come out quite well um, if I get about an hour's worth of data on that um, 
eventually I would like to start looking at getting some data on um, the um, the Andromeda Galaxy but at the moment it's behind this tree so this is a photograph I took of my back garden and of the fence and the bushes around etc so it can help me to figure out what what I can and can't see and I've worked out that the um, Andromeda Galaxy which I really really want to get a photograph of and that's probably it there um, um, is behind this tree so um, I'm not going to see that for a little while but eventually it will start being this part of the sky uh, at a reasonable hour. Um, something I mentioned in the video um, uh, yeah, that, uh, that I put up very recently about four o'clock in the morning um, is that um, basically yeah I, I ended up staying up quite late um, until the early hours um, uh, to to doing the imagery of the the the, um, the veil nebula and watching for any sort of planets that were coming up whatever you um, so okay um, without much further ado so um, going back to the this is the um, the computer on the telescope. So we are going to add target to sequence. We're only going to do a simple sequence for this one. And again, we are going to say uh, 300 seconds, which is five minutes. We want a total of 12. That will give us another hour of data to go on top of the hours worth of data that we've got already. The, um, let's see. The camera is pre-cooled to five degrees centigrade, which we did on the previous video. Uh, the focus is ready, the telescope is ready, guider is ready, guider is switched on. Um, we can auto-select a star and it's picked one, I think it's this one here, and uh, begin guiding so it'll start going through its um, pre-set up st uh, steps to work out the um the the issues with the scope so guiding essentially uh, the, the the cogs on the telescope cannot be perfectly manufactured to rotate at the same speed and and accuracy as of the earth so guiding uses uh, a view of the sky um, and looks at a particular star for any drift or errors and uses those to those calculations to keep the telescope on track so that's what it's doing now so um so yeah so once that's once that's fine we can literally just leave that to do what it needs to do so we go into our sequencer we're going to say to it okay uh slew to target we've already done centered it we've already done start guiding yes um our auto focus on starts um the, the different temperatures so it should already be in focus but different temperatures of metal and the glass and the equipment may produce slight variations in focus so every time we go and start taking images we should also do a a, um, a focus check and um, if the temperature changes by five degrees um, centigrade in this case it again will run through a check um, to make sure everything is um, in focus and as previously this um, hardware provides all of um, the uh, temperature data so there we've got it's it's 17 degrees centigrade outside um, so without much further ado so we can start this sequence so the autofocuser is now running it will take a 10 second photograph no so a five second photograph I, I brought it down from 10 seconds and then it will work out where it currently is and whether it needs to adjust it so we can go into the imager and we can see what it is looking at 
So there is some satellite trails, which is not great. Um, uh, going straight across our target. Um, there is the bright star, which is... Where are we? Yeah, there's a whole load of star links going. So you can see these ones going down and these ones going this direction, going through our target area. So that's what these lines are. Oh, they've gone now because um, there's no satellite passing through at that time. You can start to see the veil here, um, or the, the 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 part of the supernova remnant around this star here. So this star is between us and that nebula. So let's have a look. What is the name of that star? Oh, uh, oh wrong software. That's the Stellarium. Um, I'll come back to this in a second because this was quite interesting. Uh, I want Stellarium on the laptop. So we are looking at this here and this star is called um, 52 Cygnus. So if I can select it, 52 Cygnus, double star, quite a bright star. Um, and it is between us and this um, this nebula area. Okay, so um, yeah, what I did want to show you was, let's go back to the telescope computer, and on the telescope computer, Solarium's running. These green dots all represent, um, they all represent stars that have been found to have planets around them. Now you'll notice this area here is a little crazy, but simply because there's been lots of surveys done in this area. And so there is lots and lots and lots of stars. Uh, the, the, the Kepler um, satellite did lots of observations and it found that each one of these um, is a planetary system which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Every single green dot has been found to be a star with other planets around them, which um, which is, there's so many. And that's just in that part of the sky. And there's all of this sky. Well, the whole universe is literally teeming with planets which is just amazing so i can switch that off um so the focus is complete which is great so the the focus wasn't that far off the guider has started it's using that star up there it's decided for for guiding is the best one um and there is that it's a double star we're obviously not going to be able to see it's a double star. It's this the main star is very bright. Um, but we can wait five minutes. Uh, we're only on 50 seconds. We'll wait five minutes and we'll see what comes up. So I'll just pause the video and then um, we will we'll see what we can see. So here we go, we've got 15 seconds left. And all that lovely data, that five minutes of data has been uh, being gathered into the into the camera. And here we go. We've got five minutes. So it's now checking the image. And there we go. So there is the Vail Nebula that um, this is one frame that we had um, you know, that is going to be one of many. So um, you may be wondering, well, we've already seen this. We've we've already got a picture of this, so uh, and it's on Facebook. It's it's in the previous video. It's on Instagram. Why are we doing this? Why why are we haven't getting another picture? Well, it's all to do with um, 
it's all about gathering more data for the same picture. So the more data we've got, the more that the software um, has a, a way of basically creating a better image. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of red area over here. Um, and that is to do with light pollution. Um, that is, I'm get, I think that's over to the left. So there is a, a, a large airport in this direction. There are lights from a, a school and houses in that direction. So that all causes problems, which can all be filtered out. But the more images we've got, the more data we got, we have, the, the better quality picture we will end up with. So what you can do is you can say, take 12 pictures, an hour's worth on one night. And then you can either, you know, either take more or you can um, the next night come back to the same target, get another hour, and the next night get another hour, given that if it's reasonable weather, which we don't seem to be having much these days. Um, and the same thing can happen the following month or even the following year. So you can get lots of data for a target and then you can improve it by adding more data every subsequent time you come to it. So you don't need to grab everything in one go, all at once, all or nothing. You, I'm going to take all of this data, an hour's worth of data, and add it to the previous hour, and then run it through the analysis software, and then hopefully get an even better picture than I got before, revealing even more uh, detail of this um, this. Sort of ribbony elements here, as you can see, it sort of goes along like so. This this wall, it's like a, almost like a tidal wave of um, superheated gas that's going from over here to over here. Okay, so that's just a, a very quick video of um, what we're looking at for the moment. No, it's not. <laughs> Okay, so this is the Veil Nebula. I'm going to get an hour um, on this and then uh, I will stop the video now and then come back when I have switched targets to possibly, I'm thinking of maybe the Crescent Nebula. There's the Crescent Nebula is one I would like to see. Um, so let's have a quick look at the Crescent Nebula. Where is the Crescent Nebula? I know it's around here somewhere. Let's look up. Uh, Crescent Nebula. Crescent Nebula. So we've got to type it all in and then where is it? So yes, it's very close. It's just up from here and near the North American Nebula. And the Crescent Nebula looks like a crescent. It's also recently been called the Euro symbol um, nebula, but um, it is um, an emission nebula. Uh, I believe it's it's related to this star in the middle, but I'll have to get more information on it. But we could head for that, or as I say, we could go to the um, the uh, Dumble Nebula, which is there, which is all in the same part. Of the sky. Okay, uh, that's it for now. So I will come back uh, to this when we've finished with the um, the Veil Nebula and then move targets, either deciding on the Crescent Nebula or the uh, Dumbbell Dumbbell Nebula. And uh, that's it for now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so that sequence is complete. It is just coming up to quarter past midnight. Um, and that that part is done that those 12 frames are done and we can see there we go there's the the veil nebula so we'll take that data and we will apply it to the previous data that we've got now we are going to go and look at the crescent nebula I've decided it was going to be the cres let's spell crescent <laughs> oh gosh crescent Nebula. Let's see if it comes up. 
There we go. Um, and it is very much in, in, in the sky that, you know, the, that we're looking at. So it's set for framing assistant. Let that load up. There it is there, there's the, the crescent. So I'll say slew and center. So it's gonna start doing that now. And I'll switch to imaging and go to the, and I should see, or is it may have already have moved. Yeah, it's already moved. So it's now doing, oh no, no, there we go. There's the, there's the telescope moving. Just a little delayed. Um, so yes, it's not very far away. And like I said, it was a little bit further up from the Val uh, Nebula. So there you go. So we're now doing plate solving. So it is determining what we're looking at in the sky and, and if it is the right place. And something is there on the screen. See if we can go to the main imager. And looks like we've got something. We've got... Um, Pretty much it looks like the crescent there, um, but it needs to frame it perfectly straight on. So what it's doing is saying it's a little bit off, a uh, little bit of an error. So it is going to correct itself and um, work out if it's in the middle of the screen, which it says it is. So. Uh, if we go and look at the Crescent Nebula is there, so we're looking at the Crescent Nebula. So that star in the middle is, um, if we can select that particular star, um, oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, uh, some satellites going through. Um, so yeah, there's the star in the middle. Um, and I'll get some information about that. I know there's something specific specific about that um, that star. Uh, if I can select it, no. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Um, let's close this down. There it is there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get half an hour's worth of data. So I go to the framing. There it is there, we can see it. Um, Termin rotation of camera, don't really need to do that, but we can just see which way around the telescope is pointing. Like so, there you go. So it's worked out, that's the way we are looking at it. It's not 100% necessary. Um, add it to a sequence. We're just going to do a simple sequence and I'm going to do again 300 seconds so it's five minutes and I'm only going to do six this time because it's, uh, it's getting fairly late so um, six in total autofocus and start if after that start guiding uh, and it's going to be taken until 1247 so let's start. So it starts the guider up. Auto selects the star, that one it says. And um, the guider has started. There we go. And now the autofocus. So what it does is it selects the star, works it all out and then stops the guider in order for the autofocus to to um, do its job and then it restarts the um, guiding. So we'll come back to this in another five minutes or so and when we've got um, a, an image, a full five minute image of the Crescent Nebula because I mean that is only 10 seconds so there's a lot of um, information there, um, and um, yeah, let's see, let's see what we can get. Okay, welcome back. So what I've done is I've done something a little different, uh, and you can see 
on the screen the um, the the um, Crescent Nebula. Um, it is a five minute exposure. I've actually cooled the camera down a little further to nearly minus 10 degrees centigrade. Um, I'll put that on the screen as to what that is in Fahrenheit. So it's twice as cold now, the temperature um, of the sensor, um, which should reduce more thermal noise and uh, while we're doing these long exposures. Um, so yeah, so the Crescent Nebula, there it is. Now, what it is, I've done a little bit of um, reading up on it. The, um, the star in the middle here is, it's an emission nebula. So this is uh, hydrogen um, that, is, that is glowing from being energized by um, energy radiation coming from that star. Uh, it's 5,000 light years away. So this light that we are seeing from this is 5,000 years old. So this left, you know, so it's the year 2022 now, obviously. So back that 2022 years ago, and then another roughly 3,000 years prior to that. So 3,000 BC that this light left this location which is pretty amazing um, so in the middle is a wolf riot star and um, basically this is this star has has reached to the end of its days it is it is um, um, it finished all of its nuclear fuel off and it expanded to become a red giant um, and that happened around a quarter of a million to nearly half a million years ago so I'm just reading this this off uh, Wikipedia um, but to get this this particular information because I I don't know a, a lot about wolf riot stars, um, but basically it's saying that um, it's been formed by the fast stellar wind coming off this wolf riot star, and it's colliding and energizing the slower moving wind ejected by the star where it became a red giant. Um, so basically, one type of energy is colliding with another type of energy uh, um, um, and um, basically producing this glowing uh, region. Uh, as it, and it, it, if you can imagine, it, it's like a bubble expanding away from, from, this, um, from this star. So to put that into context, it would be like um, if you dropped a stone into a pond and you get ripples going out and then you drop something much, much heavier and it produces a big splash. So the, the, the splash sort of hits the, the waves that were happening from the, the smaller stone. Um, so yeah, so it is, so it's 5,000 light years away as we've already discussed. Um, and um, it will show up really well in hydrogen and oxygen um, three uh, filters. So this filter that we're using is a combination of a uh, hydrogen and hydrogen alpha and oxygen three type of filter. So we should be able to get some great looking detail out of it. And um, so it's just finished next image so if I go one to one um, you can see it right up close oops I didn't want to do that I wanted to go full screen there you go um, so there you go so you can see the the euro nebula as it's called because it looks a bit like a euro symbol shape um, but it's also def most definitely a crescent shape coming off that say that central central star so okay so this is going to continue for I've, I've got um the sequence i've only said six shots it's done two uh i'm on to the third one and then it's going to finish at just past 1 a.m <laughs> um and um then i'll shut the everything down and that'll be that so i'm hoping to get because uh, i think it's a clear night to, to, tomorrow night 
I'm hoping to get another set of data from this, maybe another hour's worth. So I'll have an hour and a half um, and then we can see what, what, will, what it will look like. OK, so that's enough for now and um, catch you on the next one. Thank you.